Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on uh, solid fluid operations. So, in this lecture we will try to uh, learn about uh, the general expression for uh, flow through pack beds which is uh, given by uh, Argon uh, which is called as Argon equation. Uh, already we have discussed about that uh, uh, what will be the you know flow phenomena whenever uh, the fluid will be flowing uh, through the bed of uh, packing materials or it is called the granular beds and what are the basic equations for that uh, like we learned uh, uh, what is Darcy's law and uh, what is that you know cosinic Kármán equation and uh, how that cosinic Kármán equation can be derived from the basic uh, you know momentum equation that is given by uh, hagen poiseuille's uh, uh, equation and that concept of that hagen poiseuille's uh, phenomena of flow through that uh, uh, circular pipe that concept uh, was used to derive that cosinic karman equation and uh, based on that cosinic karman equation uh, we have learned how to calculate the uh, frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through the porous media or be, uh, bed of packed materials or uh, granular beds and also some characteristics factor like you know surface area per unit uh, volume of the bed as well as surface area per unit uh, you know volume of particles and how those surface area as are interrelated uh, also uh, how those uh, you know surface area will be you know uh, very important for you know analyzing that fluid uh, flow uh, through that porous media. So, that we have learned in the previous lecture and in this lecture uh, also we will uh, concern about that uh, uh, flow through that uh, packed beds, but here this uh, will be concerned with the general expression uh, just by considering that flow phenomena in a streamline as well as turbulent flow. Whereas, in cosinic Kármán equation that we have learned about that uh, you know flow phenomena only at that Reynolds number less than 10 that means very uh, laminar flow regime. Whereas, here we will uh, try to uh, you know consider that laminar flow regime as well as turbulent flow regime. So, in that case uh, how uh, that uh, you know uh, friction or pressure drop can be derived I think uh, it is uh, given uh, by Argon uh, in uh, his uh, you know derivation. Uh, in this case uh, we will uh, try to learn about that uh, uh, initially what is that application of that pack bits and uh, also derivation of the uh, Argon equation how it can be derived based on that you know laminar and turbulent flow effect or you can say that viscous effect and inertia effect. So, before going to that we will try to learn something about where that pack bed or packing bed material uh, which will be used for that chemical engineering processes and where uh, that pack bed reactor can be used for that chemical engineering processes. You will see that some industry they are using that for separation of naphtha in a Cosi refinery like BPCL they are using that pack bed system and also dew point isothermic hydro processing uh, you know they are using that uh, pack bed where them some solid materials as a catalyst particle to be you know intact and through which that fluid will be flowing and then uh, uh, that reaction will be happening for the hydro processing and also you will see that Lurgi mega methanol plant they are how uh, methanol can be produced from that you know uh, methane and uh, from the you know oxidation of the methane. Uh, and uh, how that methanol can be produced that is uh, you know uh, Lurgi you know mega methanol plant uh, where uh, this uh, production is being done. So, there also this uh, you know uh, pack bed is uh, being used there. Some other industrial uh, reactions over heterogeneous catalyst bed in a pack bed reactor can be you know carried out like here some example here given uh, in the slides like catalyst you know metals here example like nickel, palladium, platinum. Uh, as a powders or on support or uh, metal oxides uh, like chromium oxide can be used for the reaction of polyphene uh, with hydrogen which will give you the paraffin. Similarly, other catalyst like nickel that is actually being used for you know uh, production of uh, you know methane 
that is called methanation process with that you know synthesis gas that means carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas which will give you that methane uh, in presence of nickel catalyst. Even you will see that sometimes that iron as a catalyst that supported or you know sometimes promoted with the alkali metals that is being used for production of ammonia from the hydrogen and nitrogen. So, this hydrogen and nitrogen will be passed through that you know bed of that iron where that uh, you know ammonia to be produced after reactions. Also copper like supported on zinc uh, oxide with other components like aluminum oxide also it is being used as a catalyst particles as a packed bed where synthesis gas to be produced as methanol production. So, here uh, uh, this uh, co copper or you know aluminum oxide particles should be you know as a packing material to be used in the pack bed where that synthesis gas to be converted into methanol. Similarly, other you know catalyst particles like rhenium and platinum you know mixer as a catalyst particle which is to be used for you know dehydrogenation of the paraffin even isomerization and uh, you know dehydro you know cyclization for reaction that uh, this uh, catalyst rhenium and platinum uh, mixed catalyst to be used. Other application like you know some solid acids as a catalyst you can say silica and aluminum oxides mixer and then you will see that zeolites. You are there you will see that sometimes you need to crack that uh, heavy hydrocarbons to uh, produce that lighter hydrocarbons there. So, for paraffin cracking this type of you know catalyst are being used. Even you know that palladium uh, supported on acidic uh, you know zeolite those are uh, used as a hydro cracking of that paraffin. Even sometimes you will see that metal oxide supported complexes of like chromium, tilicon, even you know zirconium those uh, catalysts are being used for you know polymerization of polyphene like that like uh, production of polyethylene from the ethylene. Even uh, you know silver like on uh, inert support promoted by alkali metals like vanadium pentoxide or uh, platinum all those are being used for conversion of you know ethylene oxide or sulfur trioxide there. Even bismuth uh, polybdate also as a catalyst in a pack bed to be used for you know oxidation of uh, propylene to produce that uh, you know acroline. Uh, so, that case uh, we are using uh, that uh, different catalyst particles uh, which is to be intact in a packed condition or sometimes as a fluidized condition to be used for uh, you know production of different hydrocarbons even different different uh, inorganic chemicals also just uh, you know passing uh, that uh, fluid through that you know bed of catalyst particles. So, that is why it is called that pack bed uh, and uh, this pack bed reactor to be used since there is a reaction happens in presence of this catalyst particle. So, here we can say that this packed bed uh, is uh, very very important uh, for the production of different uh, carbons, hydrocarbons even uh, you will see that uh, different organic and inorganic chemicals there. So, in that case you have to know some hydrodynamics. Uh, uh, of that pack bed reactor uh, as this you know UG label at least you have to know what the frictional resistance uh, of that pack bed and how that pack bed uh, reactor can be designed based on that frictional resistance or frictional pressure drop. So, you have to know what is the frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through that pack bed and uh, what is the governing equation what is the general expression that you have to know. So, let us uh, learn that uh, you know general expression for estimation of the frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through the bed of packed materials. So, in that case uh, we uh, know that whenever fluid will be flowing through that you know uh, packed bed. So, practically uh, that packed bed will be you know packed with a randomly arranged packing material uh, that may be irregular size uh, of that particles who have uh, some sphericity uh, value. So, in that case what should be the frictional pressure drop in that pack bed that uh, may be occurs uh, that frictional resistance that may be occurs due to some viscous effects and also that inertia effect. So, whenever fluid will be flowing through that packed bed you will see that uh, there will be an effect of uh, viscous uh, effect that means fluid will be come in contact with the you know solid surface and in that surface there will be some viscous effect because of that you know viscosity of the fluid and that is called uh, frictional uh, forces. And also whenever fluid will be flowing uh, at a certain velocity there will be some inertia effects also. So, both the you know effects 
uh, viscous effects and inertia effects will contribute uh, the friction or pressure drop in the back bed. At high Reynolds number, uh, you will see that inertia effects will be dominating compared to that you know viscous effects, whereas that viscous effects will also be important at low uh, Reynolds number. So, in general, we can say that this total uh, you know frictional pressure drop will be contributed by pressure drop due to viscosity and pressure drop due to the inertia. So, uh, these two components uh, will give you that total you know frictional uh, pressure drop in the packed bed. Here you will see that in the suffix is represented as uh, you know frictional. So, in 1952 actually Argon given an uh, you know general expression uh, to you know uh, estimate the frictional pressure drop and uh, he has derived uh, uh, this frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through the bed of uh, packing materials that is in pack bed and from this uh, contribution of the viscous and inertial effect. So, let us learn those things first. So, if we consider that uh, for a pack bed, uh, uh, it is proposed that you know this uh, uh, drag force per unit uh, total uh, you know surface area of the particle, you will see that uh, which will be defined as drag over the channel wall consisting of pack bed particles divided by total surface area of the particle. Now, here channel wall we are considering whenever that fluid will be flowing through that uh, you know packed bed, you will see that the fluid will be flowing through a voids. So, that voids will be itself called as a channel, small channel there. So, that is why whenever it will be passing through that voids or channels, so there will be some drag force acting over the channel wall and uh, of that you know packed bed particles. So, uh, that drag uh, force per unit uh, surface area of the particles will be represented by this F d by A s. That will be actually called as wall shear stress, wall uh, shear stress uh, in laminar turbulent flow in both the cases. So, whenever fluid will be flowing through that uh, you know void fractions uh, or void region through the void, you can say that the wall shear stress will be based on that laminar as well as turbulent flow. So, uh, we can say that wall shear stress in laminar flow plus wall shear stress in turbulent flow both will be contributing to that you know drag force per unit surface area of that particle. Now, what is that wall shear stress in the laminar flow? That will be actually proportional to the viscosity of the fluid, also proportional to the velocity of the actual velocity of the fluid and also it will be inversely proportional to the hydraulic radius of the channel. So, in that case we can uh, uh, represent by this mathematics here. So, F d by A s will be proportional to the mu F u A by R s that will be contributed by wall shear stress. Similarly, that F d by A s that means drag force will be you know proportional to that density of the fluid and also that square of that velocity uh, of the fluid through which uh, fluid uh, that is uh, through the void. So, here uh, we are having these two contribution uh, as a proportionality uh, factor. So, what is that proportionality constant here? K 1 uh, is the proportionality constant for that you know wall shear stress in laminar flow. So, we can write here that K 1 into mu F U A by R S this will be your you know drag force at this wall uh, per unit area that is called wall shear stress in the laminar flow. And then K2, K2 is here it is called uh, that again constant, proportionality constant uh, that will be uh, coming from that wall shear stress in the turbulent flow. So, total wall uh, shear stress in the turbulent flow will be K2 into rho F into U A square. Okay? So, here we can say that uh, this uh, portion will be dominating that means wall shear stress in laminar flow will be dominating if the Reynolds number of the particle is uh, less than 10 and uh, wall shear stress in turbulent flow will be dominating if Reynolds number will be greater than 10. So, here this uh, two components will be contributing to the total drag force here. And uh, also this Reynolds number here will be defined by this uh, equation. In this case, uh, you will see here Reynolds number uh, of the particle as a star we are considering here. Uh, it is defined as rho f u a 5 p d p by 1 minus epsilon f into mu p. So, here epsilon f is the void fraction that we have discussed in the previous lecture also and u a is the velocity of the fluid and uh, phi p is the sphericity of the particle, d p is the particle diameter, mu f is the viscosity of the fluid and rho f is the density of the 
fluid and u a is the actual velocity of the fluid it is basically the superficial velocity divided by the void fraction. And then uh, you have to know what is that hydraulic radius because this hydraulic radius is uh, actually will be giving the contribution to that wall shear stress there. And this hydraulic radius uh, that is the total cross section of the conduits divided by weighted perimeter then we can write here uh, will be equals to total cross section of the conduits divided by weighted perimeter into L by L. Here L we are just considering to get the total volume of the voids here and also here L we are considering the total surface area of the particle. So, we are having this uh, value here that hydraulic radius will be S 0 L into epsilon A by A S. Whereas, A S is called this is uh, basically that uh, total surface area of the particle. Now, how can you find out that uh, total surface area of the particles? Now, you do not know how many particles are there in the packed bed. So, if you know that number of particles let it be considered here that n p as a total number of particles there. And if you know the surface area of individual particles or one particles uh, which is represented by s p then we can have the total surface area as n p into s p. So, total number of particles into surface area of one particle will give you the total surface area of the particles. Now, n p how will you calculate that n p? n p that is number of particles number of particles how will you calculate for that you have to know what will be the volume of that particle that is total volume of the particle in the pack bed. So, total volume of the particle in the pack bed it will be basically that if you consider H0 is the cross sectionality of the pack bed and L is the length of the pack bed. So, it will be your volume total volume of the pack bed out of which some volume will be for particles. So, that will be the 1 minus epsilon f 1 minus epsilon f is basically the particle volume fraction. Epsilon f is the volume fraction of fluid. So, 1 minus epsilon f is the particle volume fraction. So, total volume of pack bed into particle volume fraction will give you the total volume of the particles in the pack bed. Now, if you divide it by individual particle volume then you will get how many numbers of particles will be in the bed. So, that is why we have divided it by VP. VP is basically the volume of individual particles. So, we are having this and then you have to multiply by the surface area of one particle. So, finally, we are getting here H 0 L into 1 minus epsilon F B P is basically 1 by 6 into pi d p cube and after substitution you will see that of this S P or B P here you will see that S P by B P already we have calculate here S P by B P is equal to S P is basically pi d p square surface area and volume of these particles then it will come 6 by dp dash and it will be basically 6 by 5 p dp. So, after substitution of this value here we are getting that a s will be equal to h 0 l into 1 minus epsilon f into 6 by 5 p dp. So, in this way we can calculate the total surface area of the particle. So, once we know that total surface area of the particle we can calculate what would be the hydraulic radius from this equation. Okay. Next, after uh, finding out that uh, total surface area and uh, hydraulic radius, then we will be substituting those values here uh, in the drag force per unit uh, surface area of the particle here as Fd, Fd into As value we are just substituting here uh, this As value and then after this will be is equal to what that will be contributed by the laminar uh, shear stress and the turbulent shear stress. Okay. So, these two shear stress uh, will be contributing to this total drag force. So, after substitution of this R s value here again then also u a, u a will be equal to u by epsilon f after substitution of u, u value here u a into epsilon f uh, then uh, we are having here uh, all in terms of you know that uh, u uh, value. So, we are having this you know uh, drag force here uh, will be is equal to finally after simplification we are getting this uh, equation that is rho f into u square uh, divided by epsilon f square into 6 k 1 mu f into 1 minus epsilon f by u phi p d p rho f plus k 2 this one we are getting. So, this is basically that drag force per unit you know uh, surface area of particles. Okay. Then you have to substitute the value of Fd. What is that Fd? Fd will be in terms of 
friction or pressure drop. So, F d that is drag force can be defined as by this equation F d is equal to drag force that will be delta P F total frictional pressure drop into you know what is that cross sectional area that will be occupied by the fluid because that fluid will be give you the frictional pressure drop. So, that total uh, surface area that is occupied by the fluid that will be H 0 into epsilon F. So, the delta P F frictional pressure drop into surface area occupied by fluid that will give you the drag force here. After substitution of this F D in the earlier equation here, in here in this case you can say uh, and simplification uh, we are getting this uh, equation finally. Okay. So, delta P F total by L that into epsilon F cube by 1 minus epsilon F into phi P dp by rho F u square that will be 36 k 1 into mu F into 1 minus epsilon F by u phi P dp rho F uh, plus 6 k. So, this you will get. So, simply here we are substituting F d value in terms of frictional pressure drop and H 0 into epsilon F and after that we are simplifying like this. And then based on that experimental observation by Argon, there will be some constant value this you know k 1 and k 2 here this k 1 value and k 2 value. We do not know this value. So, based on experimental observation it is found that this k 1 value is coming uh, 1 by 50 by 36, 150 by 36 and k 2 is 1.75 by 6. So, after substitution of this k 1 and k 2 value here in this equation again okay, then we are getting this equation here delta P F total by L here uh, as this or after simplification we are having this equation delta P F by L uh, that is 150 into 1 minus epsilon F square mu F u by epsilon F cube pi P square d P square plus 1.75 into 1 minus epsilon F rho F u square by epsilon F cube phi P d P. So, this equation is called that argon equation and it will have two components here these components this is coming from the viscous effect and this component coming from the inertia effect. Okay. So, this equation you have to remember. Okay. So, this is called argon equation. Okay. You have to remember throughout your life as a chemical engineer you have to remember this argon equation. Whereas, uh, this uh, you know equation will be dominating or this frictional pressure drop will be dominating as a viscous uh, loss uh, where this uh, Reynolds number will be less than 10, whereas uh, Reynolds number if it is greater than 10 uh, then uh, you know kinetic energy loss will be there that means here inertia effect will be dominating. So, in that case you have to remember these two components of this argon equation. Also total argon equation that you have to remember. Now, defining the friction factor for the back bed. Now, in terms of friction or pressure drop this friction factor can be defined by this equation okay. and then uh, after substitution of this you know frictional pressure drop from that argon equation and substituting that we can express this equation from this part okay, fine. And then we are having that F p will be is equal to here 150 by R e p star plus 1.75. So, this is basically the argon equation. Now, from this argon equation part we can have this as F p, this as F p here. So, F p will be is equal to what 150 by R e p, this is basically what R e p plus 1.75. So, we are having this uh, friction factor A p will be equal to 150 by R e p plus 1.75. So, R e p star is defined as earlier given. So, in this way we can define what will be the friction factor for the packed bed. Similar friction factor for the circular pipe when we fluid will be flowing through that circular pipe there Hagen Poiseuille's equation also there it is given that what is the friction factor that friction factor depends on that flow regime whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow. In the laminar flow that friction factor generally 16 by R e okay, Reynolds number uh, and for turbulent flow that friction factor is equal to 0 0.079 divided by R e to the power 0 0.25. So, that is in absence of particles, but in presence of particles here as a packed bed that friction factor will be defined by this 
this is also related to the Reynolds number ok. But this uh, you know Reynolds number will be defined by this since there are you know two phases solid and fluid. So, Reynolds number will be defined by this and here uh, this friction factor again it will be inversely proportional to the Reynolds number. In earlier cases also in absence of particles that friction factor is inversely proportional to the Reynolds number ok. And then uh, we are having from this uh, friction factor in the pack bed uh, that is 150 by REP plus 1.75. We can say that if REP is less than less than is equal to 1 viscous effect dominance in that case that it will be AP will be equal to 150 by REP star which will be called as cosine Karman equation. If REP is greater than 1000 that is inertia effect will be dominates. So, in that case AP will be equal to 1.75 this equation is called black plumber equation. Now, argon equation is used to calculate the pressure drop across pack bed of particle which will be less than 25 millimeter that you have to remember ok. Now, let us uh, do some example here. In this case you will see that a packed bed of total packed volume of 5 meter cube in which the volume of packing material is 2 meter cube. If the pack bed is operated with a superficial velocity of 2 meter per second then what will be the actual velocity of the fluid in the pack bed. So, in this case uh, very interesting that you have to find out what will be the actual velocity. So, for that you have to know what will be the volume fraction of the particle first here it is given volume of particle is 2 meter cube and the volume of the pack bed is 5 meter cube. So, volume fraction of the particle it will be 2 by 5 that is 0 0.4. So, volume fraction of particle it will be 0 0.4. So, remaining fraction it will be of course, void fraction. So, void fraction of pack bed it will be 1 minus 0 0.4 that will be 0 0.6. So, the total uh, you can say the actual velocity of the fluid that actual velocity of the fluid will be you know superficial velocity upon void fraction ok. So, what will be the superficial velocity? Superficial velocity can be obtained from that you know volumetric flow rate divided by the cross sectional area. But here it is given that superficial velocity is 2 meter per second. So, you can get the actual velocity of the fluid will be equal to superficial velocity divided by void fraction that will be equal to 2 by 0 0.6 that will be coming as 3.33 meter per second. So, I think you understood this example. Now, coming to the another example how to actually calculate that you know void fraction of the pack bed. In that case you will see that in a pack bed of cross sectional area given uh, as uh, 0 0.10 0 meter square and length of 1 meter and uh, there it is found that the total surface area of all particles is 10 meter square. Under this condition if the hydraulic radius of the packed channel is found to be 0 0.002 meter then what should be the void fraction of the packed bed that you have to find out. Now, you know that hydraulic radius is defined as hydraulic radius that we have already discussed there the total cross sectional area of the conduits divided by weighted perimeter ok. And uh, you know total uh, cross sectional area of conduits by total uh, perimeter that will be equal to you know that into L by L that you have to multiply by L by L. Then you will get the total volume of voids by total surface area of the particles which will be defined as by this H0L into epsilon 8 by AS. Whereas, H0 is the cross sectional area of the bed and L is the length of the bed, epsilon F is the volume fraction of the fluid and AS is the total surface area of the particles. Now, which will imply that epsilon from this equation we can write then epsilon F will be equal to RH A S by H0L. Now, after substitution of this you know value of RH, RH is given to you that is hydraulic radius 0 0.002. AS value is also given to you and H0 that means cross sectional area is given to you and L is given to you. So, after substitution of this value you will be finding out what will be the void fraction. Now, coming to the another example where we will be able to find out what will be the pressure uh, across the bed when the volume flow rate will be given to you and also uh, they are what will be the you know particle density and other parameter. Now, let us have this problem here. The problem is that a packed bed of solid particle of density 2500 kg per meter cube that occupies a depth of 1 meter in a vessel of cross sectional area is 0.04 meter square. The mass of solids in the bed is 50 kg. 
and the surface volume mean diameter of the particles is 1 millimeter. Okay? Now, a liquid of density 800 kg per meter cube and viscosity 0 0.002 Pascal second flows upward through the bed, which is restrained at its upper surface. Now, in this case, you have to calculate what will be the voidage, that means volume fraction occupied by the liquid of the bed and also calculate the pressure across the bed when the volume flow rate of the liquid is given as 1.44 meter cube per hour. So, in this case, first of all, you have to know what to be the voidage here. So, how can you calculate the voidage? To calculate the voidage, you know, if you have the value of mass, mass of the solid and also cross-sectional area of the bed and also length of the bed and also particle density, I think everything is known to you. So, mass of the solid will be related as A L into 1 minus epsilon F into rho P. This is the equation. What is that A A is the cross sectional area into A L that means total volume of the bed into 1 minus epsilon F that is volume fraction of the particle into density of the particle that will give you the mass of the solid. So, that mass of the solid is given to you as 50 kg. So, upon substitution of this 50 kg here and cross sectional length and density, you will be able to calculate what will be the void fraction. So, it is coming as 0.5. Okay? You will see that uh, after that, if you use that argon equation to estimate the pressure drop across the bed at this flow rate. Now, flow rate is given 1.44 meter cube per hour. You have to calculate what will be the superficial velocity. So, superficial velocity, it will be very simple that volumetric flow rate by cross sectional area. Volumetric flow rate is 1.44 meter cube per hour. You have to convert it to meter cube per second and then you have to divide it by cross sectional area. Then you will get velocity. That means that velocity you can get it. Then epsilon f is known to you. Viscosity is known to you. Epsilon f is known to you. 5p also is known to you. That means sphericity is known to you. If it is spherical particle, then uh, 5p will be equal to 1. Okay? And then you will see that dp particle diameter it is given to you and also here rho p density of the particle is given to you. So, all the parameters or you know variables value is given to you. So, after substitution of those values you can get what will be the friction or pressure drop per unit length that will be equal to 6560 Pascal per meter. Okay? I think you understood this problem how to calculate the frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through the pack bed. Let us do another example here to calculate the friction factor due to that frictional pressure drop whenever fluid will be flowing through the you know, pack bed. So, let us uh, have this problem of like this a pack bed of cross sectional area 0 0.0036 meter cube of materials of sphericity 0 0.68 and diameter 3 millimeter is operated for a catalytic cracking of heavy hydrocarbon whose density is 860 meter cube per second and viscosity 0 0.18 Pascal second at its flow rate of 0 0.018 meter cube per second. What is the friction factor of the flow through the bed of porosity 0 0.4? Here porosity 0 0.4 means void fraction is given 0 0.4. Now, we know that friction factor of the pack bed is as 150 by R e p star plus 1.75. So, R e p star, what is that R e p star? that is you know rho f u phi p d p by 1 minus epsilon f into mu f. Rho f is given to you, u is the velocity, velocity also is given to you. Okay? Uh, velocity I think given as a flow rate, so you have to divide it by cross sectional area, cross sectional area is given to you, so you will get that, that is velocity of the fluid. So, this is known to you and also phi p I think sphericity is given to you 0 0.68 d p diameter of the particles is 3 millimeter that means 0 0.003 meter and then epsilon f that means void fraction is given 0.4 and mu f viscosity of the fluid is given 0 0.18 Pascal second. So, after substitution of all those values here we can calculate what will be the Reynolds number. Now, this Reynolds number is coming as 81.22. Now, after substitution of this Reynolds number here in this equation, you will be getting the value of friction factor of the pack bed which is coming as 3.60. Okay? 
I think you understood this example problem. Now, let us uh, have another example problem. This problem is given in GATT 2011. Here it is said that for a liquid which will be flowing through a packed bed, the pressure drop or unit length of the bed is expressed by Argon equation. Given that the particle diameter is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter, sphericity is 0 0.8, density of the fluid is given 1000 kg per meter cube, viscosity of fluid is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per meter second, particle density is given 2500 kg per meter cube and acceleration due to gravity is given 9.8 meter per second square. When the velocity of the fluid is 0 0.005 meter per second and porosity is 0 0.5, what is the ratio of the viscous loss to the kinetic energy loss? Now, as for that Argon equation that we have derived there, we got that Argon equation of that final form. So, this is your final form of the Argon equation. It has two components of its right hand side, this components will give you the viscous loss and this components will give you the kinetic energy loss. Now, you have to find out what will be the ratio of this viscous loss to the kinetic energy loss. So, viscous loss by kinetic energy loss just by dividing these two factors, you will get this value viscous loss by kinetic loss. Now, for calculating this ratio, you need viscosity, you need density, you need void fraction of the fluid, okay. this is void fraction of the fluid and density of the fluid, particle diameter and sphericity, everything is known to you. So, we are substituting here 150 by 1.75 into 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 is the mu f, rho f is the 1000 and then 1 minus epsilon f is 0 0.5 and then uh, what is that 5 p is given 0 0.80 dp 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 and then u is 0.00. 5 meter per second. After substitution, you can get it as 10.71. So, the ratio of viscous loss to the kinetic loss will be equal to 10.71. That means, viscous loss will be 10.71 times of this kinetic loss. Okay? I think you understood this problem here. Okay? So, we uh, learned here in this lecture what is the Argon equation, how that Argon equation can be derived what are the different components of that Argon equation, when those components will be dominating from each other. If Reynolds number is greater than 10, then we can say that inertia effect will be dominating. If Reynolds number which is defined, which is given here is less than 10, then viscous effect will be dominating. And also what will be the viscous loss and what will be the kinetic energy loss that we understood. And also we can say how to calculate the drag force that is coming from the frictional pressure drop. And also we understood that how to calculate the friction factor in the pack bed. Okay? So, also we obtain or we understood how to calculate the frictional pressure drop from the Argon equation just by solving different example. So, I think you enjoyed this uh, lecture. And you, you, I think, uh, uh, came to know different information or various, uh, you know, information about this fluid flow through the, you know, packed bed. So, in the next lecture, we will also try more about this, you know, flow through the packed bed. There, we will consider two phase flow instead of single phase flow. Till now, we have uh, discussed about the single phase flow and uh, the laws are Darcy's law, Cosini carbon equation and Argon equation. But in the next lecture, we will try to learn about the flow phenomena whenever two phase flow will be flowing through that and also their application. So, thank you. Have a nice day.